But let me say, if you call me in the morning, and I fail to answer the call. I'm either getting ready or I may be already gone. Because I just stopped back on my way home. And on my way home, God gave me a choice. And I stopped by here this morning to share that choice with you mm -hmm. in the words of the commodities. A choice yes, to keep I have. Yes, sir. I got a God mm -hmm. yes. to glorify. Yes. A never dying soul to save yes. and fit it for the sky. I'm not worried about what I didn't get finished yesterday. Yeah. I'm not even thinking about what might be available tomorrow. tomorrow. Yes. But the only thing that I want to do is to serve this present age, my calling to fulfill. Oh, may it all my powers engage to do my master's will. Yes, now, if I got any children of God here today, I want you to raise your voice. Mm -hmm. Because God knows I'm going to raise mine. Yeah. Maybe the last time, I don't know. Right. But I'm going to do it while I can. Yeah. shall be comforted.
Let us pray. This morning, our Heavenly Father. Father, first, we just want to say thank you. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for your grace, and we thank you for your mercy. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for that touch of love early this morning. And oh, Heavenly Father, when our eyes come open, you bless us to be able to see another day. Realizing, Father God, it wasn't because of our good, it wasn't because of our righteousness, it wasn't because of our name, but Heavenly Father, you have had mercy on us one more time. Father God, we come praying and asking for the forgiveness of sin, Father God. For the word acknowledged to us, Heavenly Father, that we all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But we thank you, Father, for sending your son, Father God, the one, Father God, that died that we all might have a right to the tree of life. And oh, Heavenly Father, we come now asking your continued blessing upon this family, Father God, our family, Father God. Father God, give them strength. Give them understanding, Father God. Let them know, Father God, you're a loving God. You're a kind God. And Father God, let them know, Heavenly Father, that when you looked out into your garden, Oh, Father God, you only, Father God, pull the best of roses. Oh, Father God, those that just look the best under you, those that are ready to be cut. And Father God, we know, Heavenly Father, that she's resting with you, Father God. Oh, Father God, but we thank you. Thank you for the time that you allowed her to be with us, Father God. Thank you for the time that you allowed us to be with her. Thank you for the laughter, the joy. Father God, we even thank you, Father God, for the trials and tribulations. Father God, for because of her strength, Father God, it made us stronger, Father God. Oh, Father God, we thank you. We glorify you and we magnify you. And Father God, we just pray and act in Jesus' name. Oh, Father God, let us know, Heavenly Father, that this is just the beginning. Oh, Father God, and if there's anyone, Father God, have not got on board, Father God. Father God, this train, this glory-bound train, Father God. As we just heard, Father God, we don't know when our time coming. But Father God, whenever it is, Father God, help us to be ready. Help us to stay ready that we'll be ready when you come. Oh, Father God, we thank you. Continue to bless the family and each and every one on the sound of our weak voice. Bless the one that will break the bread of life to us, Father God. And Father God, we pray, Father God, you continue to bless us name by name, family by family. In the name of Jesus the Christ, we do pray and ask it all. Amen. 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 So my family, one I've had the opportunity to know all of my life, I greet you this morning in the name of Jesus. From the 23rd Division of Psalms, David made it personal. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. Mm -hmm. He leadeth me beside the sea of water. He restores my soul. Mm -hmm. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name. Yea, though I walk through the valley mm -hmm. of the shadows of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou prepares the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anoints my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. New Testament from the book of Revelation 21. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven, the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride of dawn for her husband. Mm -hmm. 
And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God <coughs> is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. And God himself shall be with them, and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain. For the former things are passed away. Four voices from the 21st chapter of Revelation. God's words for God's people. Amen. 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 So we've come to, during our homegrown services, the crossroads of life. Because now we've come where the family has opened up and allowed anyone to come and speak a few words, a few words, Amen. <laughs> a few words, Amen. 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 On behalf of Mother Spencer, we just ask that you would just respect their wishes. In fact, I think what you would have to say after the service would give more meaning and it would give you more time with them. So uh, I'm gonna sit, so if you see me stand, I don't know if we do this anymore. <laughs> That means bring it on down. Bring it on down. Your time is limited. Amen. Amen. The floor is open. Good morning, church. Good morning. I just want to give honor to God, first of all, my Savior, my friend. There's not much I can say about my auntie, but she was my second mother. I would go to school in the morning, come home at lunch, I had one. I would go to school in the morning, I got up and I had breakfast. If need to, I had dinner. <laughs> my aunt was my aunt. She was, I was her niece. I'm the only one that she gave that nickname to. And I say I'm the special one. <laughs> Don't mean to step on none of my other family toes, but I'm that special one. When she needed me, I came. When she wanted me to do something, I did. No questions asked. I'd come home every now and then, and I said, oh, me, Mom, you need your hair done. She said, yeah, niece, you will do it a little bit in a little bit. So I'll go do me, because I'm always on the porch. <laughs> me mom says, well, Nisi, you told me you was going to do my hair. I said, well, me mom, I was waiting on you. She said, no, you don't wait on me. You do what I tell you to do, and when I tell you to do it. So that was the report that me and my aunt had. I would come home, and she said, well, when you're leaving. I said, well, I'm going to stay a day or two. She said, you can't stay no longer. I said, no. But the most fun we had is when I came and stayed a whole month. Right. <laughs> because Levon made a mistake. <laughs> she gave her my phone number. <laughs> <laughs> Two, three o'clock in the morning, she calling her to see, where you at? I said, me, mom, I'm in the bath. She said, OK, let's go. I need you. I jumped out of bed. I'll be right there. She said, well, just sit here with me for a while. I really didn't want nothing. I just want to talk. And that's basically what she wanted. She just wanted that company. And I am so blessed that I was able to give my auntie what she wanted. And I'm going to shut up. <laughs> Eyes, everybody. This is the day that the Lord made, and I'm glad to be in it. Thank you, Lord. Uh, I could say Mother Gladys because she played a role in my life. When I was in my darkest time, she showed up. And her conversation was always, always about Jesus. And I just 
And I just hung on to that. When she just come to quip, it wasn't so much the shawl, but it was to just to find somebody to tell them the good news about Jesus. And I learned this and I held on to the word. So up until this day in my life, she's still here with me in my heart. to speed up right now. I want to say to y'all, when I met Mother Glass, we knew to call her Cousin Glass, and her sister Cousin Tiny, and it was back there when they come back home to visit, you know, home, family, come home, family time, family reunion time. And it was so special to me to see her walk. And she had Two favorite shirts that I knew that she loved so much. That was Sacramento Star and New Hope. Amen. And I say this thing to y'all today. She had a heart of gold. When I say she had a heart of gold, I'm out way on her. But when I got sick, I found to my bed and two out of seven. One thing about cut glad it. She never stopped bringing me food. <laughs> she bought me food out of the week. It's on that Tuesday, Wednesday, she was bringing me food. And she said, y'all, that goes a long way. Oh, my mother had gone on. But thank glad I accepted as a mother because she made for sure she was going to bring me something to eat. And I knew to love to see her and come glad and come glad as then. Cun Tiny and Marina, some lady walked in there like queen. And they be dressed better than the young. And they looked good. Had their jewels on their rain and their rain. They looked good. Good morning to all. Just a quick word. And I know you all know who Sister Gladys was. And, you know, being around her and seeing how beautiful she is. Um, I first um, encountered her, um, that I can remember it, as her being a parent. I was the, uh, her grandson's teacher, and um, we have meetings at school and ask the parents to come. And she came out driving this sports car. Let me tell you, I said, woo, who is that? And then out steps this lady all dressed to the teeth. I'm like, who is this? And that smile, you know what we saw then, that sparkling of the gold. I said, Lord, have mercy. But she was so interested and in loving her grandchild. She wanted him to be the best and do the best. And I was so glad to have her, you know, in the parent meeting and that she was concerned about him and she was helping him all that she could. So we just praise the Lord for parents, ex teachers that come out and um, you know, help their children and meet with us and we work together. And then I encountered her um, at the food bank and if my husband could, he would be here to speak. Um, beautiful lady came every Tuesday from four to six, uh, rain or shine or, you know, so we just enjoyed her volunteering to help um, distribute the groceries and, um, to the ones that came up, beautiful spirit packing and you know, all, and then she was a friend to my mom and just praise God for her. So she was all of that, you know, parent, beautiful person, um, you know, sister in Christ, you know, because he told us to feed the ones that are less fortunate than us, you know, and then they could hear the word. And then, you know, her uh, being a friend to my mom and to my husband. And let me just tell you this, she was a giver. 
um, she gave to my mom on a day that uh, my mom said she needed that twenty dollars, you know, and she hadn't asked for anything. Uh, Miss Gladys was just giving, and then when my husband um, left his job, you know, retirement takes a while to kick in, especially for us, you know. Um, you know, occasionally she would hand him a little piece of money. She said, "He said, look what she gave me, you know." Um, and it was just enough, you know, to help him out, help us, to help us. So we just want to praise God. And we do look forward to seeing her when in the earth made new. When the Lord comes, bust through those clouds to come to receive his own, I believe she would be one of them. So praise God this morning. Lift up your hearts. Um, this is a sleep. You know, let us not worry. She has lived her life. She did what God told her to do. And we're going to miss her. Yes, we're not going to be selfish. We're going to get ready so that we can see him as well in peace. To God be the glory. God is awesome. I just, I just wanted to add a ditto to what Sister Hazel had just saying about the food bank. That's when I think I first met her. But I just wanted to know that she worked at that food bank for about 20 years. 20 years. No pay. All this all a volunteer service, and she was there practically every week to serve and to help people out. And also, I just want to say this too: when each year that the scrub had their family reunion, she invited me and my family every year. Every year, it made me feel just like a scrub. I'm just grateful that the Lord put her in my life to help me along the way. And I'm just grateful for that. Praise God, everybody. I am, um, and Gladys is my aunt. And um, I, it, you know, I wasn't going to say anything because everybody is saying such beautiful things and uh, I had to because uh, she was special to me. We had a special bond and um, I loved her so much because she was there. She was there for my dad through everything that he went through. Yes. My dad was not well when he left here but Aunt Gladys, I could count on Aunt Gladys when I, you know, a couple of times um, I was in the hospital and my dad was calling my cell phone, but I couldn't let him know where I was because my dad was a worry ward. And uh, his heart was not good. And I told her where I was, and you can't tell him. And she said, I won't tell him, baby. I said, well, Aunt Gladys, I'll be to the family reunion. I came to the family reunion. I had on those pressure hose things. She said, you got on them stockings. I said, yeah, but he don't know why. So she said, I'm going to hold a secret. I said, okay. You know, at Gladys to hold some secrets. We had some talks, you know, and I, I've never heard anything that I've told her come out of anybody else's mouth. So I knew then Aunt Gladys is not only my aunt, she was my friend. And I thank God for her, um, for being there for my dad. And not only for my dad, for our entire family. She was there. And Phyllis does. She has her special spot. And I'm, I'm not going to try to come in between you and Aunt Gladys because I had my spot too. Okay. Anyway. Um, anyway, I love you, Phil. You know that. Um, anyway, uh, Aunt Gladys was just special, not only to, to our family, but to a whole lot of people. I'm like, well, Aunt Gladys, who is that at the family reunion? Because we would have all these people that I've never seen before. And, oh, Aunt Gladys, who is it? That? That's so-and-so. You know so-and-so. And so. I'm like, no, Aunt Gladys, I'm from Florida. I have no idea, but okay. They here, they must be family. But anyway, um, I just wanted to say that I love my family. The Scrubs family taught me a lot about love, about love, what real love is. And that is who we are, and that is who we will always be. That is who God made us to be. We are love. That's who we are. And people love us and we love people, you know? And that is who we are. So I love you guys. 
God bless you guys. And I just thank God for the years with Aunt Gladys. Amen. I thank God for the years. Amen. And my sisters, they, they wouldn't come up here with me, but they came around here. <laughs> Hi, I'm Charles, and I'm visiting from Norristown. And I lived on the block with Gladys for many years. She was always quite older than me, and she simply adopted our family Everybody and me. Everybody, Everybody on the block. block. Everybody, Everybody on the block. On the block. <laughs> she had a smile like no other woman in the world. She told me, baby, you can't say anything helpful. Don't say anything at all. Amen. And she was special. So this is what I'm asking. It doesn't take but a 30 seconds. I think we all should give Gladys a standing ovation. Like right now, everybody should give us a standing ovation. I thank you. Everybody. Amen. Absolutely beautiful words of sentiment. This time, we're just going to ask if you would read the obituary when we will have a selection by Sister Renee McKinnon, and then we will bring you words of comfort.
Come on, let's give the Lord a hand. Couple of praise. I know your hearts are heavy, but this is the time right here where you should be giving God all every praise that you can get. Every praise belongs to God. Hallelujah. How many of you know that your, your, your blessing lies in your praise? Hallelujah, somebody. Come on and lift up those holy hands and give God a praise right now. He's still worthy of the praise. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I've had some good days. Yes, yes, yes. She did. And I have some hills to climb. And I had some weary days. Hey. Some sleepless nights, but when I when I frown, hey, I think things over all of my good days. Out we my bad days. Oh, I, Lord, I won't complain. Sometimes the cloud hang low. Lord, I can hardly see the road. So I asked her to watch the Lord while I like what so much pain when you know what's best for me although my weary eyes they just can't see so instead of
Amen. Amen. Yes, Jesus loves us. But this Bible that I hold tells us so. A couple of things about Mother Jackson that I could think of. You got I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Mother Spencer. They in my thoughts as I was thinking about making this statement. I remember how they used to dress. They were real sharp dressers. I mean, from head to toe. Amen. And then after service, I would walk up to Mother Spencer. And I would stretch forth my hand and she would say, I don't want no handshake. Give me a hug. Amen. So it kind of tells you something about her personality that had already been talked about. But before I go into the word, I'm just in awe of what I'm looking at. It's almost like God is having communion with the ancestors of the slaves. Those slaves who are part of that diaspora where they come over from Africa. I'm looking at all this land, which shows me that God has still promised his people. Amen. Amen. And I'm looking at all these generations of people. And I love to listen to the Holy Spirit, which causes me to speak, not what I have prepared, but what he would have me to say in this moment while I have the opportunity to say it. And I want to read a scripture, a couple of, if you will, and I'm going to get out of your way. Yes, yeah, Sister LaVon, you did good. <laughs> this is a beautiful. I'd rather be out here than in the building. Amen. Isn't that right, Reverend? Yeah. <laughs> Jesus says this in the book of John, that 13th chapter. Then I'm going to read something out of Hebrew. That 31st verse says, when he was gone, Jesus says, now is the son of man glorified and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will glorify the son in himself and will glorify him at once. My children, I will be with you only a little longer. You will look for me and just as I told the Jews, so I tell you now, where I'm going, you cannot come. Verse 34 says, a new command I give you. Love one another as I have loved you. So you must love one another. By this, not jumping and shouting, not how well you can preach, not how well you can sing, now, how good of an usher you are, or a deacon, or a deaconess, by this, all men will know that you are my disciples, that you belong to me, if you love one another. So watch this in the book of Hebrews, that 12th chapter. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. By this, all men and women shall know that you are my disciples. Yes, yes. I want to talk to you briefly from the thought, you can't serve without love. You cannot serve without love. Now, let me be very clear when I speak of serving. I'm not talking about church activity. I'm not talking about you serving on a board. 
I'm not talking about you serving in some kind of ministry or some kind of auxiliary. Because Jesus never dealt with a building. So when he says for us to serve and love one another, he was talking about each other. I'm almost done. Love ye one another by this, Reverend Hewitt, shall all people know that you belong to me. All I've heard as part of this service is love. Everywhere from the acknowledgments, everywhere from what people have said, everywhere from her. I never knew she served at a food bank. That tells me she stepped outside of her mansion at her comfort zone and looked out for somebody else. And if, if the world needs nothing else right now, it needs love and it needs servitude. We have too many egos. We, 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 we get power. We're looking for power. We're looking for position. We're looking for prestige. And yet our communities are falling apart. Our homes are falling apart. Our marriages are falling apart. Because nobody wants to love. Because love is Amen. what it does. Yes. And I'm talking about, watch this, not the kind of love that's reciprocated. Because some people will only love you if you can get it back. But can you love people if they never pay it back? Watch this. Jesus died and paid the ultimate price. And you and I can never pay that back to God. But God says, if you want to pay me back, love one another just as I have loved you. Watch this. Faults and all. Hang-ups and all. Tripping and all. Jealousy and all. Envy and all. Backbiting and all. I still loved you enough. You think that God didn't know what he was sending to, re to retrieve the people and their behaviors? How can a I, I find it interesting yeah. that flawed people always points out other people's flaws. Oh, yes. They only know. Yes. So I can sit down now, right? I find it interesting that flawed people yes. are the chief people that call out other people's flaws. Yes. Love ye one another as I have loved you. Yes. And remember I talked about that great diaspora, that journey? Yeah. And I'm looking, at all, I'm looking at all of us. Yeah. And I'm looking at all of what they went through. Mm -hmm. It was love to stay yeah. on the plantation. Yeah. It was love to be hosed with water, water hoses. It was love to sit at a counter and they called you all out your name. But yet they hung on just for us. Yes. Love. Watch this. And I'm done. Because I got to share this with you. I've been to seven graveside services in the past nine weeks. So watch this. It goes from faith to faith. Watch. Right? And then it goes from generation to generation. Right? So I'm looking at several generations now. And there is what appears to be another fading generation. Watch this. There appears to be another fading generation. Which means that if there's a fading generation, then the hands of the community... It's going to be in the hands of the generation behind. I heard the Holy Spirit told me to tell us this, 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 this quote unquote new age generation. This is the season of serving. This is not the season to get all you, all that you think you want. 
I don't care what society says. This is the season of finding your purpose in serving something and somebody. Watch this. Let me tell you how I know it to be true. Why should that be my purpose? Because somebody served you. Somebody fed you. Somebody clothed you. Somebody gave you shelter. Somebody made sure you had an education. Somebody made sure they gave you got a ride to a job. Which means they were serving us at that time. Now it's our turn to serve. I don't care what social media says. I don't care what the government is not doing. We've always taken care of us. In fact, can I say it, Reverend Pinkney? Just in case you don't know it, from a historical standpoint, the black church and the black community was the first welfare system ever in the United States. We've always taken care of our own. Love. Ye, one another, just as I love you. Amen, amen. And then it says, and I'm done, let us lay aside. The Bible says every weight. Translation, let us lay aside. All this mess. And I don't know what your mess is, but you know. You know what issues you're dealing with. You know what's on your mind. You know what's on your heart. Let's not gather like this today. And then disperse this evening. And then not gather again. If you had enough love to show up today, you ought to have enough love to continue the process. Love ye one just as I've loved you. I don't get a choice when it comes to loving. Because I told God, yes. And I'm thankful that he loved me in spite of my mess. Bless you, Pastor Washington. If I walk in the pathway of duty, if I work until the close of the day, I shall see the great king and all his beauty when I've gone the last mile of the way. The family of Mrs. Gladys Spencer is thankful for your prayers, your visits, your phone calls, food, and all the acts of kindness and love. To Pastor Washington and the New Hope Missionary Baptist Church family, to the Simmons Hill, Missionary Baptist Church family. The family thanks you for your love and your support. Special thanks to the Victory and Christ Christian Center for your love and support throughout the years. May God continue, that is, to bless each and every one of you, is their prayer. From Mr. Jim McGee and the Stevens McGee Funeral Home staff now comes a special presentation If I can help somebody as I travel along this way, then my living shall not be in vain. I saw a t-shirt earlier that said, legends never die. Hashtag Scrub Nation. Amen. Scrub Nation. 
if you are a part of Scrug Nation and you're proud to have been a part of Miss Gladys' life, please join me as we give her memory a round of applause at this time. Amen. 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 In a few minutes, we'll prepare our hearts for the final viewing. Once the casket is open, I'd like for you to pay attention to what's in the cap panel. It simply says, may the work I've done speak for me. May the work I've done speak for me. When I'm resting in my grave, and there's nothing that can be said. May the work I've done speak for me. Mrs. Gladys Scrugg Spencer, November 6, 1930, February 15, 2022. Amen. God for the message that was rendered on today and we thank God for the messenger please let us give a round of applause to Pastor Carl Washington Jr. Amen for a job well done. Amen. 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 Please join me in saying thank you to Pastor James Hewitt for being here on today and to share his spiritual blessings. Amen. 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 To Pastor Brown, let's thank her for being here on today. Amen. Amen. And to Pastor Pinkney for opening up with the hymn. Amen. Thank God for you. Amen. If there are other ministers present, we thank you one by one, name by name. Amen. Amen. Before our viewing, I take this opportunity to say to the family that we love you. We love you. <laughs> You all can't see it, but they're doing this on the front row. Amen. That means we love each other. Amen. Amen. We pray that we've been helpful to you during this time. One thing about Miss Gladys, she didn't have step. Amen. So we pray that all is well because that's what she deserved. Amen. When Miss Gladys spoke, you would listen. Y'all know E.F. Hutton? Amen. You listen. Amen. So we were listening all through the years. Amen. And after 91 years of longevity, she made her point sure. Amen. Amen. On behalf of my dad, Mr. Jim McGee Sr., who she called son. Son. He tried to sit on the front row, but we... Amen. He's there on the front row. Amen. That's her son, too. Amen. We just want you to know, family, that we're here for you always. If you need to talk, laugh, share memories, that's what we're here for. 
We will be praying for you and we will be praying with you. May God bless and continue to keep each of you is our prayer. Amen. 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 Let us prepare our hearts now for the final viewing. Following the viewing, we invite you to follow us to the Morning Star Cemetery so that we can properly commit, pray, and have our benediction. God bless you. The young man lifting the flower off the casket is my little brother, Jim Jr. Miss <laughs> Gladys would call the funeral home and yeah. say, Look, Jim, I need a tent in my yard. <laughs> not next week, not in two weeks, today. <laughs> and guess what? The tent would be put up today. <laughs> So don't
But not really, that's all.
Hey, live, live. Come on. 